Good morning and welcome back to the New Forest. It's nearly the end of April now and spring finally seems to have arrived. It's been a long winter. So this edition of the Video Diary will be looking back at some of the goings on in the forest during March and April this year. If you're wondering about this segment at the start of the video then we're coming back to that later on so look out for that. Let's go and see what's been happening then. In the last version of the video diary, we saw Alan Falder's great pictures of a spoonbill down at Lymington. I thought I'd pop down there and see if I could see a spoonbill myself. Of course, I didn't see one, but I did see lots of other birds. And here's some of them. I think I've identified them correctly. This is a turnstone. These are winter visitors from Northern Europe and Canada. These busy little birds are sandpipers. This is another winter visitor to the south coast. This is a red shank. Some of these migrate here from Iceland, but others live here all year round and nest here. This majestic bird standing on the bank is a little egret. These are fairly common along the south coast now, but they've only been living in England since 1989. This is unmistakably a curlew with its long curved beak. The curlew is one of the birds that nests on the ground in the new forest and its numbers are declining so much that it's now on the red list. And this is a male widgeon, another winter visitor from Scandinavia and Iceland. And here's his mate come to join him. So I didn't manage to see a spoonbill, but I did see several other interesting birds. When I went to look for the spoonbill down at Lymington, I walked through the boatyard. Lots of work going on to prepare the boats for the coming season. This one's gift wrapped, ready to go to its new owner. I also walked past the seawater baths, which are empty for safety reasons, as the baths are closed out of season. This is the oldest outdoor seawater baths in the UK. In the summer season, the baths look like this. In the last diary, we saw the man that I'd met in the forest who wasn't wearing any boots. I read recently in the Lymington Times of a man who only wears his boots in the forest, but nothing else. He's a naked rambler. I believe that he's been spoken to by the police. Walking around naked in the forest is an odd thing to do, especially in the cold weather. If it was me, I think I'd wait until the weather warmed up. The first week of March was cold, but dry. The second week was cold and wet. On March the 8th, we actually had some snow. Out on my walk, I heard a lone song thrush singing his heart out. The snow soon melted, and the second half of March was a bit warmer, but with loads of rain. The ground was wet again. March is the start of the birds nesting season and this includes the rare ground nesting birds which nest in the open heath areas of the forest. These are species like curlews and red shanks that we saw earlier and snipe, lapwings and others. If you're walking your dogs in these open forest areas make sure they're under control at all times and keep them on the paths. In case you're not sure which sort of areas you should avoid it's the open forest areas like this which you'll see throughout the new forest. The spring flowers were in full bloom by the end of March and I think the cooler than usual weather helped them to flower for longer than usual. After the driest February on record, March was the wettest March for 40 years and also had the lowest amount of sunshine on record. It was also chilly. Well I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks very much. 
April began with slightly warmer weather, but we had a lovely sunny Easter until the bank holiday Monday washout. The New Forest Reptile Centre opened for the first time this year for the two weeks of the school holidays at Easter. The reptiles have all woken up from their hibernation and taking advantage of the sun when it was out. If you visit the reptile centre, you'll see that all the reptiles live in their own outdoor environment. These are called pods. Each pod is covered with netting to stop predators eating the reptiles. The netting also stops people putting their hands in to try and touch the reptiles. Definitely not advised at the adder pod. At this time of year, the deer shed their winter coats. You can see these fallow deer, filmed in the woods in late April, looking a bit moth-eaten. No look back at March and April would be complete without a mention of the dawn chorus. At this time of year, the male birds sing to attract a mate and to defend their territory. This is the mating season for birds and this was beautifully captured by Anne Hall. Here's a female mallard with her ducklings that have recently hatched. Sadly, most of these ducklings will end up as lunch for a predator's chicks. Nature's food chain seems very cruel at times. Now back to the opening sequence of this video. There are signs in most of the public car parks in the New Forest and other areas asking people not to touch the ponies. But still, people do touch the ponies. This child was very nearly injured. It was filmed by commoner and New Forest author Sally Marsh. This just shows how quickly somebody can be injured. You can also now be fined for feeding or petting the ponies. So if you visit the New Forest, Enjoy looking at the ponies, but don't go too near them. They are wild animals. I've put a link to Sally's book website and her Facebook page in the text below. Have a look. If you like the forest and ponies, you'll probably be interested in Sally's books. And that brings us to the end of our look back at some of the things that went on in the new forest during March and April. Thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel to see more videos from the Country Traveller.